Hello everyone, Raven of the Retro Dev here. And in this video, we are going to uh, set up MS DOS 3.31 on an 8086. And this video is it's not going to be too long, but it is going to be relatively quick. Um, so, a few things to note before we get started. Um, in the description, uh, there is a TandyNet image file. That particular file uh, has been modified by me again to include uh, some programs and tools and other stuff that uh, we need uh, for this. Uh, it includes a mouse driver, a free DOS edit, and some other stuff. Um, now, the question is, of course, before you know, we actually install, why are we installing MS-DOS 3.31 on an A86 machine? Well, first off, number one, why not? It's fun. And number two, memory. Memory is always a good reason. So um, if you see in front of you, uh, we have total memory, conventional, and upper. And on this machine, we actually have quite a lot of available memory, uh, which is you know absolutely wonderful and amazing. Um, but you don't have upper memory in an 8086 machines, or at least not 88, any that I know of. Maybe there is probably, you know, rare oddities out there. Um, so you would actually use quite a lot of, you know, your system memory. Um, I mean, system and command are using 20 kilobytes on their own. So 640 becomes 620. And then you add a network driver, or sorry, your packet driver. And now you have 615. And while this doesn't seem like a lot, games, some of them need quite a bit. So, you know, you don't you don't want to use up, you know, all your memory just loading the operating system. I think FreeDOS uh, loading everything it needs on an 8086, I think it smacks you down to like 580, 590. It's, um, you know, at that point, you know, some games won't run because... You know, they need like 600 or something. Um, and that's games like, you know, OutRun and stuff like that, which are very fun, but what's the point if you can't, you know, play it? So, um, actually, I think it was Operation Wolf that complained about not having enough memory for me anyway. OutRun just didn't run, which is interesting. Anyhow, uh, so let's go ahead and get started here. Um, now I'm not going to provide a link or anything to MS-DOS 3.31, but it's relatively easy. And this video will be the basis for a future video on programming on an 8086. So I just want to get that out of the way. And now that the little history of, you know, why we're using MS-DOS and not 6.62 is completed, let's get started. So we're going to go up to settings in 86 box. And... Uh, there's also a link in the description for getting 8086 box and the ROMs, so grab that. We're going to set the machine to 8086, and there's a lot we can choose from. We're going to pick the Tandy, and the reason we're picking the Tandy is because the Tandy has Tandy graphics, and most 8086 machines had CGA graphics. EGA didn't really become a thing until the 286, or at least common. I mean, it was around. I think EGA started being around in 84. Um, so, you know, if you had the money, you know, you could get a 286 IBM for like $6,000 and like $84. And I think it came with an EGA card or it came with like an MCGA card. Either way, point is, it wasn't very common, but Tandy supports CGA. So we can have a tutorial on Tandy stuff and CGA, which all would have been common on an 8086. And we can do EGA graphics and stuff on, you know, the machine that you see behind me here which is, a, you know, 160 megahertz, 486, which would be much better. So we're going to pick uh, 16 megahertz for the speed, and we're going to pick our FPU as an 8087. Um, just why not? Make sure memory is maxed out, because that 128K of memory is going to go for the video. There's no display. For sound, or sorry, input devices, thought it was on sound there. Uh, we use a Microsoft serial. Put it on COM1. Maybe we'll just have it be a three-button mouse. Why not? Or a sound card. Um, you don't need this one, um, but if you want to, we'll just use a Sound Blaster 1 
and we'll just make sure it's on IRQ7, the DMA is one, the address is 220. Okay, all of this is just basically the default. Just actually, I think it was literally the default, wasn't it? Yeah, literally the default. Okay, that's fine. Uh, for fluid synth, um, Roland MT32 would probably be actually a thing that would be there, but I'm just going to continue to use my fluid synth because I don't feel like changing that. For networking, if you would like networking, you want to pick Slurp and then you want to pick the any 1000 and then configure it at IRQ3 and the address at 300. Uh, for ports, I'm just gonna leave this alone. Now storage controllers, this is where it gets really interesting. So uh, you wanna pick the Magitronic B215 and you wanna pick the QLogic XT IDE drive. And then for hard disks, we're just gonna remove that one. We're gonna pick a new one here. We're gonna make an IDE drive. Oh, let's just specify where we wanna put this thing. Uh, hard drive and BHD drive. And we're gonna overwrite, in my case, the Tandy one. I'm gonna just overwrite it, I'm gonna save, okay. And we're just gonna make this probably, how big do we want to make it? Let's just make it 234 megabytes. Why not? And we're going to make sure it's on channel zero, zero. So it's the master on channel zero. And we're just going to hit OK here. And then it's going to take a second. It's going to, you know, create the drive, depending on how big you choose to make it. Now, with MS-DOS 3.31, one of the big selling points of 3.31 over 3.30 is um, the fact that it comes with the ability to load like big drives, like up to 512 megabytes, I believe. Um, but we don't need that much. Uh, for floppies, you wanna change it to a 3.5, and for your second one, you wanna change it to a 5.25. Uh, for the CD drive, you can just disable it. There's no CD. Uh, and everything else, you can just leave alone. You could get a memory expansion, I suppose. We could deal with that stuff maybe in a later tutorial, but. I don't know if I really want to deal with that, to be honest. Okay, so everything's all set up. Um, so now what do we do? Well, now we just hit OK. And it loads up. It boots. Looks like it boots. Uh, at this point, it's probably blinking because it's trying to access the hard drive, and it's very confused because, you know, there's no floppy. So let's go on ahead and load our existing image here. Go to disks, operating system, DOS 3.31, and then reboot yet again. And there we go. Okay, so one annoying thing about this Tandy and MS-DOS 3.31 is every time you load, it's going to do that. It's, it's going to do that. Now DOS is loaded. Congratulations, we have loaded DOS. Um, but we actually have a hard drive and if I could type we could run fdisk and we will create a DOS partition create a primary partition yes we want to use the full amount and yes again insert diskette when ready okay so what we're doing here is we're creating the partition see it's going to do this every time it's we're never going to have this I suppose there's probably a way to fix it but you just hit enter twice, no big deal. It just doesn't save. Okay, so now we're just gonna format C and it'll ask us or warn us, you know, the data on the drive, you know, will be destroyed and then hit enter and that's fine. And then we're just gonna wait a moment here because this can actually take quite a moment um, to, uh, to run through. And good, my my weather app is is updating. That's uh, always super thoughtful. I, I enjoy my, my weather app updating. Okay. So, I'm gonna put my phone on silent there. We're getting there. Look at that. Look at that beautiful super super slow format uh ms dos 3 format so much slower and part of it is probably the 8086 and it's one of the reasons why we picked 16 megahertz um traditionally this version of tandy came with a 9 or 4 megahertz i believe uh 8086 so you did not have a 16 though i 
suppose you could overclock it, or uh, I believe that's how you would get the 16 megahertz. You'd have to overclock it, which would, you know, it's interesting. Oh my goodness. Still going. Should be getting near the end there, though. That's how I overwrote the ROM Tandy. That wouldn't surprise me. This is quite a lengthy setup. At this point, most of you have probably already switched to the next part, which is, you know, actually installing the DOS. How many cylinders did this thing have? Oh, 967. Okay, so yeah. Never mind. We're getting near the end. This is another reason why I didn't want a, uh, like, half gig hard drive. Like, mm. No. Just takes a moment. It's going, though. It's going as fast as it can. Okay. Format has now been completed. So now what we're going to do is move the microphone just a bit there. Okay. We are going to type, if we do a dir and a wide dir, you can see we have basically all of DOS is just loaded on this one disk. That's how small DOS was. It could fit on literally one 1.4 megabyte disk. So we're going to do sysc and just wait a second here. All right. The system has been transferred. And now what we want to do is we're going to make a directory called DOS. And then we're just going to copy A over to DOS. File not found. Uh, uh, excuse me? Interestingly enough, there is X copy on this thing, which maybe let's just go to C really quick. Okay, let's do it from C. File not found. Hmm. All right, we'll just do an X copy because it can apparently find uh, X copy. Bad command. All right, hang on. Seriously? <laughs> it really should just be copy. Ah, there we go. I left the slash off, of course, because, you know, so we, of course, of course, that was my bad. That, that one's on me. That one was on me. I apologize. I'm sure watching the video, you guys were like, come on, put the slash. And then you'd be totally in your right to do that because that was that was that was foolish. Interestingly enough, X copy did not work the same way that. Yeah. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to copy command um uh out of A and put it in C. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna inject the drive, and then we're just going to restart the machine. And we'll just hit enter, enter. Boom. Look at that beautiful, beautiful system. And we do a dir here, and we have command, and we have DOS, and yep, we're done. Everything is complete. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to load um, the other disk that I made, the TandyNet. And we're going to go into A, and we're going to do a dir here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to make a directory called drivers. And now I'm going to copy. Uh, actually, I'm going to make another one. I'm going to call it C drivers. and I'm going to call it mouse. Unable to create directory. Also, I just realized I made that directory on the floppy, which I did not want to do. There we go. Yes, get away. Oh, sorry. There we go. Yeah, there was no file. Um, whoops. Let's do this. There we go. There we go. Okay, so now we have a mouse. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy A to C, drivers, mouse. 
And we'll just wait a second, and now we'll go into C. And as you'll notice, uh, it doesn't tell you like which directory you're in. You kind of have to know what directory you're in there. And then if we load the mouse, yep, okay. So our Microsoft mouse stuff is here. We're just gonna back out. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new directory called tools. Wait. And then we're gonna make another directory called tools and then um I'll just edit spine. And then we're gonna copy A edit to C tools edit. It's only two files, it's very small, very basic. So we have everything that we want. Uh, optionally, you could go in and copy over um, all of the net stuff if you would like. Um, you know, there's there's not really there's nothing stopping you from copying um, the net stuff over. Actually, let me let me check and see if X copy. Okay, X copy seems to work. So let's X copy a net. Wait 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 wait. Let's make the directory directory. All right, so we want to copy a net to c net e and then i. Okay, x copy I think just works differently than I'm used to there. Um, I'm not going to copy the network stuff over uh, just because honestly I'm not going to use it. Uh, but it is there if you choose to use it. I'm not. Will x copy give me the? No. <laughs> yeah. Okay, lovely. Uh, so let's just check and make sure that... Uh, let me just RD the, the net folder there. So let's go into Tools, Edit, and Launch Edit. And we're just double-checking that everything's fine. Okay, so as you can see, uh, MS-DOS Edit is working as intended. Uh, we don't have the mouse driver loaded, but we could easily load the mouse driver. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Um, literally, this is all MS-DOS uh, 3.31 is. Um, we'll just eject that. Um, you can create your own auto-exec bat file or any bat file, really, to run. But one nice thing is, I mean, you see how fast that boots? It's like snapping your fingers. It's just done. Um, I, I do like how fast it loads. Of course, it's not really doing anything, so there you go. Um, thank you all for watching. Uh, I know this tutorial was a little long winded, but it's done and it's very basic. Um, but you have edit and you have your mouse driver. And so in all the preceding videos, you are now 100% set up for everything that's necessary. So I will see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. If you wish to join our community, we have both a forum and a BBS. And we would love to have you at both. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Have a lovely day.